Welcome back. Let's review a quick rapid bomb and show why our question bank podcast is the bomb. Pun intended. So we have a 22-year-old male with type 1 diabetes presenting to the ED with a glucose of 345. His heart rate is 110. A quick bedside ABG shows a pH of 7.1. Now labs are drawn and they're pending. What is the best next option? Choice A, lactated ringers fluid bolus. Choice B, IV insulin bolus. Choice C, IV insulin drip. Choice D, D5 normal saline infusion. Okay, the answer choice is choice A, lactating ringers infusion. Now let's talk about the management of a patient with suspected DK. So IV access is critical. The first intervention is starting IV crystalloid boluses, LR or normal saline. And we're not going to get into the debate of this. The test doesn't care about that either. The goal of fluids is to correct both the hypovolemia and the hyperosmolality. Now most patients are profoundly dehydrated, with some literature quoting that many patients have a fluid deficit of around 10 milliliters per kilogram in severe cases. That's insane. So I usually start with two liters immediately, and that's the right call here. You wanna be aggressive with your fluids. Now, unless they have any contraindications for large fluid pulses like end-stage renal failure or CHF, they're not gonna confuse you on the test like that though. It's gonna be very straightforward. The key here is waiting for your other labs while administering IV fluids and rehydrating the patient. Now, once the IV fluids are running, correcting the sugar becomes the next priority which is going to be achieved with IV regular insulin, not sub-Q insulin, not long-acting insulin, regular IV insulin at 0.1 units per kilogram per hour to tame the glucose and close the anion gap. You want to be certain the patient is not hypokalemic, though, before giving insulin. That's why choice C was wrong, which said IV insulin drip. We don't have the patient's potassium level back yet. The labs are pending. And causing worsening hypokalemia can kill patients faster than them just being hyperglycemic and acidotic at the same time. Now, what about insulin boluses? That was choice B. These have fallen out of favor in recent years. They're really not in style anymore. Studies have shown that they don't offer any significant benefit and they could potentially cause harm. Uh, one risk is you know, worsening cases of hypoglycemia, overshooting, as well as a risk of cerebral edema in children too. So big stuff here, stay away from those. Again, the key electrolyte to evaluate is potassium. Let's reinforce this. Potassium replacement should be initiated immediately, and you hold insulin if your potassium level is less than 3.5 mL equivalents per liter. Almost all patients will have a substantial potassium deficit, and this is due to urinary losses generated by ketone urea as well as glucose osmotic diuresis. The only reason potassium is elevated on the presentation in some patients is because of the acidosis that's occurring. Now, potassium is between... 5.5 5.5 to 3.5, you should give 20 to 30 mil equivalents of potassium along with IV insulin with your IV fluids. And this is due to the cellular shifts that you see with introduction of insulin. Critical point here that insulin will lower potassium levels because it pushes potassium into the cells. What about sodium? Well, sodium will likely be low as well. And this is due to pseudohyponatremia where sodium is replaced by glucose as the main ion of the blood. Hyponatremia often requires no treatment. When you see it, it's really associated with dehydration, hypovolemia, and you just give them IV fluids, watch them progress. It'll naturally improve for the most part. Now, when the glucose reaches around 250 milligrams per deciliter, it's advised to switch to IV fluids that contain dextrose. That was choice D. It's far too early in this particular question to give dextrose-containing fluids. This patient is profoundly dehydrated, and they don't need hypotonic fluid. They need isotonic volume replacement. All right, let's do some coaching, wrap this all together. This is what we do with our rapid bombs. So DK management is testable and it should be memorized like the back of your hand here. It's nearly the same on every patient, thankfully. Your initial VBG or ABG and a finger stick glucose suggest DK in addition to a concerning history. You need to give volume first as you wait for your labs. Wait for that potassium level, the most important electrolyte to make your decision about the insulin drip. You don't start dextrous fluids until later when the glucose level reaches around 250 or so. You will not really be tested on that anyway, when to start dextrous fluids. That's not really an ED thing, but you will absolutely be tested on things like related to potassium, you know, potassium related in terms of what to do based on the level, why you're holding insulin, and the critical relationship between insulin and potassium, understanding that insulin will lower potassium. Insulin drives potassium into cells, thereby lowering the serum potassium level. 
In a patient who is critically ill and already really dehydrated, doesn't look good, and hypokalemic, this can negatively prolong the QT and, of course, cause cardiac arrhythmias and death. Let's avoid that.